Hello, I'm Dr. Suzanne Carter, and I lead the Coordination Unit for the Future Climate for Africa, or FCFA, research program. FCFA is implemented by five international research teams and supported by a coordination unit. These five research teams are AMA 2050, Fractal, Impala, High Crystal, and Umfula. Please click the links for further information on each research team. Today, I'm going to present an overview of co-production approaches that have been used for decision support in the Future Climate for Africa program. What exactly do we mean by co-production? Well, the co-production process can be viewed as bringing together different knowledge sources and experiences to jointly develop new and combined knowledge, which is better able to support scientific decision-making contexts. And in FCFA, co-production, which is an action research approach, was employed by the research teams to establish a common understanding of the decision-making contexts, key climate science concepts, and scientific understanding of the region's future climate. The following six case studies, which I'll be talking about in this presentation, outline some of these co-production approaches. These case studies were taken from the WISER and FCFA co-production manual. Please follow the links to read more about each case study. So let's start in West Africa. AMA 2050 used a range of approaches, including participatory impact pathway analysis, scenario games, theater forum, and participatory modeling. These have increased decision makers' appreciation of how climate information can inform long-term investments in West Africa. In East Africa, in Rwanda, the CCKE co-produced a climate risk screening tool for supporting Rwanda's green fund, known as FONERWA in its project appraisal process. Co-production engagements with project developers and for NEWA specialists were used to explore the type of information needed to better plan for climate impacts. In Uganda, High Crystal used video to initiate a farmer dialogue with the local government. The aim was to engage influential members of the farming community in a knowledge exchange process with local government leaders in Uganda and to create shareable visual resources from which other farmers could learn adaptation strategies. By initiating a dialogue around the impacts of climate change on agriculture with local government officials, these farmers were able to secure increased agricultural extension services funding for that financial year. In Malawi, Mfula worked across the boundary with users to provide more useful and usable information that more closely meets demands to inform medium-term planning processes relating to water, energy, and agriculture. For example, a water evaluation and planning system model to project Malawi's future water availability was co-developed through collaborative discussions with stakeholders. And lastly, in Southern Africa, researchers were embedded in eight Southern African cities. The embedded researcher played a crucial role in understanding and bringing together the two spaces of academia and practice. These included learning labs and dialogues, which are co-production spaces for stakeholders within cities to gather, get to know each other and share and develop knowledge. In addition to this, climate risk narratives were developed for seven Southern African cities. Climate risk narratives are stories describing a subset of plausible futures within the spread of climate projections, intertwined with local context, impacts and vulnerabilities. They were designed to help foster better uptake of climate information into decision-making processes at the city scale. So by applying co-production approaches, as illustrated through the six case studies, FCFA has supported the incorporation of climate information into decision-making. To date, FCFA is on track to influence 17 policies and plans, including the Uganda Climate Change Bill, adaptation plans in Maputo and Mozambique, and Vintuk in Namibia, and the national adaptation plans of Senegal and Tanzania. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Please follow the links and further resources for more information. And if you have any further questions, please contact info at futureclimateafrica.org.